Okay, I think a uh, good time to get started. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, as we go, feel free to put any questions in the chat. Uh, we'll address those as they come up. Um, but otherwise, uh, my name is Andrew. I will be leading our class today on Google Forms. Um, and just to start off with a little introduction, uh, so Google Forms, if you're unfamiliar at all, is a survey administration program. It's offered by Google. Uh, it's part of the Google Apps suite of software. Um, it's completely free to use. You just need a Google account, uh, as I was uh, saying earlier. And there's a lot of purposes uh, you can put Google Forms toward. Um, that could be uh, creating a survey, um, a job application form, a feedback form. Um, if you are a teacher, you could use them to create quizzes. Uh, if you're a student, you can create uh, you can create uh, flashcards. Um, there's a lot of different uses for Google Forms, uh, from business to uh, personal to event planning, um, or SVPs. That's another one. Uh, we'll get into some of the, the details of how you might set up a form for one of these uses later. Uh, but just to begin with, that's, that's kind of the, the gist of this software. Um, and to touch on our objectives for this class. By the end of the hour, everyone should be uh, familiar with several of the, the key uses of Google Forms, be able to create and customize your own Google Form, and also how to know how to share and uh, view results uh, from your Google Form. Um, so now there's a few places you can go to access Google Forms. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, there we go. OK, so you should be seeing my Google Drive page. A uh, few ways to get to, to the Google Forms. First, uh, you can just open a new browser tab or window and type in uh, forms.google.com that takes you there uh, you can also say you're in your uh, email inbox go to the grid in the upper right and then you're going to scroll down until you find the forms uh, option um, you can also uh, if you're on your Google Drive homepage, you can go to New and then click Google Forms. All of these work. It's all, you know, all leads you to the same place. So whatever is most handy or convenient for you, feel free to use. Um, I do also want to say uh, Google Forms is only available as a web app. Um, it's... Unlike some of the other Google apps, uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, uh, Google Slides even, you can get those uh, on your phone uh, through the mobile app. Uh, Google Forms does not have a mobile app, so you, you will need to create a form uh, through the browser. If you're on a, an iPad or tablet, uh, you know just open your Safari window or your browser, whatever that may be. Um, and follow one of the uh, the paths to Google Forms that I mentioned, but uh, just know that you won't be able to go to the App Store and download a Google Forms app. There isn't one. Okay, so let's see. Um, the other uh, key, and maybe <laughs> you may have surmised, uh, you do need to be logged into Google. Um, so if you Go to forms.google.com and, you know, it's it's not letting you in, then make sure that you sign in in the upper right uh, to your Gmail account. 
All right, so when you get to the, the forms, uh, forms admin page, you'll see a list of templates to create a new form. Uh, there's actually a gallery that you can uh, that you can navigate through and, and find. You know, maybe there's a, a form that uh, you know kind of fits your need already, like uh, say at your office, your school, a uh, club. Uh, you're trying to gather information for a T-shirt purchase, so there's a form already made for that. Um, and it, it has a, you know, a variety of questions that might be useful and, um, and uh, as you might expect. I'm going to back up a step though. We're gonna create our own form and I'll show you uh, a lot of the, um, the details of that. So you're gonna create new or click new and that will start a blank form so by default, uh, from the beginning, it will be an untitled form and it has one question. So where I want to begin is with the form settings. So the settings are the, the little gear icon in the upper right. Uh, click on that. And these are some of how I would consider some of the most load-bearing settings for the entire form. Um, the questions, you know, everything else kind of, uh, you can think of uh, sitting on top of these. But if you click that gear, you have three different tabs. The first is general. I'll kind of go over what these, uh, what these settings are and how you might use them. Uh, so the first option is collect emails. If you mark that, uh, then it's going to require that uh, whoever responds to your form includes an email address. Um, and uh, it'll show that information to you in the responses. Uh, that could be useful if, well, it could be useful for a variety of reasons. Um, variety of different forms. Uh, the next option off of that is response receipts. If you'd like to uh, if you'd like to be notified uh, that somebody has filled out the form, then you can choose that. Um, and you have the option of course to uh, have that be the case always or only if the respondent uh, wants to notify you. So again, different uses for that. Okay. Um, so next you might require that your users sign in. Um, so for that, you have the, the checkbox here to restrict to users in your user group. Um, I'm logged into my DGPL account. So by default, that's going to suggest uh, only, you know, users that are in my organization. You can also limit your form to just one response per uh, respondent. Um, some forms uh, like, you know, just to, to take an example, if you're uh, in an office and um, you'd like to create like a time off request form, you might not want to limit to, uh, to just one. So again, if you check that, then it will require respondents to be signed into Google so that it can adequately uh, uh, track the number of responses that each person's making. Um, you might also choose to allow respondents to edit the form after they submit. Uh, just depends if this is the kind of form that details might change. 
Um, obviously, if you're uh, administering a quiz or something like that, you would not have this checked. Um, but there are uses. Um, I'm going to skip C summary chart and text responses. Uh, so that's the general uh, settings tab. Um, any changes you make to that, you can click save uh, to preserve those for the form. Uh, next is presentation, and these all uh, kind of refer to uh, the way that uh, the form is going to look to the people you send it to. Uh, you can have a progress bar. So if you've ever been taking uh, like a survey or a, um, filling out you know, a form online, uh, you've probably seen a little bar at the bottom that says, um, you know, you are like 10% of the way through the quiz or whatever it is. Um, you can have a, a little progress bar be generated to show that to your respondents. Um, you can also shuffle the question order. Uh, this is useful if it's a survey where you'd like to get unbiased responses to each question. Uh, sometimes, you know, in doing studies, scientific studies, uh, um, uh, people conducting surveys have found that uh, the order of the question matters. Um, so if it's if it's something that you would like to survey, you know, opinions on something, anything like that, you might consider shuffling the question order. Um, and then at the end, you can also have a link shown to submit another response, and then you have a confirmation message. So by default, it says your response has been recorded. Um, you can also you know, have it say something else like, thanks, we'll be in touch. Um, or, you know, if you have any questions, please contact this person at this email or this phone number, anything like that. Um, and then moving on to quizzes. So again, this is, you know, one of the uses that I mentioned for Google Forms. If you uh, pull this slider, so it, it says make it a quiz, um, then you can uh, have grades, have the, the quiz be immediately graded, or you can set it to uh, send grades later uh, only after um, you've manually gone through the, the survey and uh, uh, issued grades. Um, immediately grading is only possible if you only have uh, like multiple choice questions or true false things like that. Um, manual review would would in, imply that you have uh, uh, written questions uh, questions that require like a, a short answer or even a paragraph answer. And then you can uh, choose whether the respondent will see questions that they missed. Uh, uh, questions that they got correct, and the point value of the questions. So any of those are uh, options that you can play around with. Um, I'm just going to say for the purposes of this and the example that we're going to work through, I'm going to make this uh, an RSVP for um, an event that I'm putting together. We'll see what, what shape that takes as we go. Uh, collect emails, they think that makes sense for us. Limit to one response, yeah, because I don't want people sending multiple uh, RSVPs. Sometimes, you know, you're responding to to a form and you forget if you've already sent it. Uh, limiting to one response, if you do that, say you click the link again to access the form, um, from the respondent side, it'll say, Actually, sorry, you already you already submitted this form. Um, you you can't send another response. So at least that way they'll know um, that they already sent their answer. Um, 
edit after submit, I think I'll leave that off. Uh, you can switch that on, it's easier for the respondent, but if we if we don't allow editing after submission, uh, that makes it easy for, easier for us to review the responses. Okay, so I'm done with that. I'm going to, and I don't think we need a progress bar uh, to shuffle the question. So done with that, I'm going to hit save. Okay, and so just as I mentioned with the email validation, uh, that is going to require an email address. That's a required question here. You can get rid of that if you go back into settings and uncheck collect emails. Okay. So let's see, um, just really quick, I want to check any questions at this point. All right, it uh, doesn't look like it. Just let me know if we, if we uh, hit anything that you'd like to know a little bit more about as we go. Okay, so next we're going to get into the types of questions. Um, so I mentioned earlier, we have this uh, untitled question that populates down here. If you click on that, um, we've got the uh, question title or the what the question will actually be. So thinking that we're creating an RSVP form for, uh, let's see. Say I'm trying to pull together like an online presentation um, for, you know, maybe like a professional group that I'm a part of or something. Um, so we'll keep that in mind as I go. Um, but I want to talk about the question types. So if you click where it says multiple choice, that gives you all the answers. Um, the icon that it has with each uh, choice, uh, I think, is really helpful in explaining what we're looking at. So short answer and paragraph questions, uh, those allow respondents to freely type in an answer. Um, so if, uh, you know, you say, like, are there any topics you'd like us to cover? Um, this gives the respondent uh, about, you know, a couple sentences, maybe. Uh, I'm actually not sure what the, the character limit is, but it gives them a couple sentences to, uh, to write in an answer. You can also do a paragraph answer. Um, that gives them uh, just a, a larger space uh, to fill that in. Uh, next question types. Um, so multiple choice. Pretty straightforward. You have as many options as you'd like. Um, so taking this from sort of a, a different angle, like, uh, let's see. What time of day works best? Um, you click in the text bar where it says option one, and we can type in uh, early morning. Option two, late morning. Click where it says add option, and we can set over lunch and so on. And so you can have as many of these options as you like. But wait, the thing with this is uh, somebody for this particular question might want to uh, mark that they, they're they able to do any time up until uh, mid-afternoon or so. Um, so with that in mind, we might want to move over to a checkbox answer type. 
So that way, uh, I'm just going to type in some answers like that. Um, so this way, if somebody's uh, available all all through the day up until uh, mid afternoon, they might be able to check. Um, they might be able to check uh, the first five options here. Um, so that can also be helpful for you. Uh, kind of similar to multiple choice, we've got the drop down answer type. And that just gives you, um, let me see if I can find an example out in the wild someplace. This is kind of a drop down menu. Uh, we click the button and it gives a menu and you just choose one of the options from it. So uh, we can think of that the same way with this answer type. Oh, and I will mention also at any time, if you'd like to see what your form looks like to a person receiving it, just click the preview button. So here's our drop down option. Um, that's if, you know, you just wanted to allow the respondent to choose one, but it presents it a little bit differently than a multiple choice option does. Come on. Okay, so, um, next uh, question type, there's uh, file upload. File upload is pretty cool. It does uh, come with a couple of qualifications, um, but it allows your respondents to uh, browse their device and upload a file. Uh, that is kind of useful if, uh, again, say you're making a form for, uh, say, a job application. Uh, you can make a file upload question for uh, the user to upload a resume or a cover letter. Um, so there are a couple of caveats. Uh, this question type, <clears throat> uh, you are required to be signed into a Google account to use. Uh, that's not a setting that you can change. That's just Google's uh, security standards. Um, and the other... The other exception is that if you put a file upload into your form, then you won't be able to embed the form into an email or web page. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but a lot of people find it useful to, <clears throat> to uh, share their form easily embedded into an email. Um, if you do a file upload, then it would have to be a link to the form. Uh, might not matter to you. It still works perfectly fine, but that's just something to consider. Um, so again, you know, it pops up with this message when we choose uh, file upload. So if I click continue. <clears throat> so there's a couple settings here it gives us. Uh, for one, you know, we can limit the number of files uh, that they can attach, one, five, or ten. We can allow only specific file types. So say it's a resume or cover letter, we would probably, you know, just to uh, kind of reduce the possible spam that we would get through the, the, uh, the form, we might limit it to just document or PDF. Uh, there's no reason that somebody would be uh, submitting their cover letter in a spreadsheet or video form. Uh, I guess unless it's like a, no, I'm, that, that's silly, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so yeah, we could limit the type of file. You can also limit the file size. Again, this is probably a better example. There's no reason that somebody's cover letter is 10 gigabytes. Uh, so, you know, we could probably say 10 uh, megabytes and that, that covers it pretty well. Um, 
So again, that's the file upload question type. Um, you've got linear scale that gives uh, a range between either zero or one, uh, between zero or one and anywhere from two to 10. Uh, most commonly people use this for the one to five scale, but you can, you know, uh, you know, use this however you like, one to 10, one to five, one to three. Um, and then you just give each of those uh, poles a label. Um, so with first being worst and three being best, and I'll show you the preview. Um, <laughs> ignore this question, that doesn't make sense, but you know, you can be set between one and three and it explains what those mean. Okay, and then linear scale, there's multiple choice grid. Um, this one's a little complex. Uh, checkbox grid is, is also kind of the same. Basically, uh, you can think of it as being a lot like multiple choice and checkbox, checkbox question types. Um, but it's got the bonus of arranging uh, your options into rows and columns. Um, so honestly, what time of day works best might be a good question to pose with a checkbox grid um, because you can have each, uh, you know, say columns, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the rows will be, uh, say, 10 to 11, 11 to 12, 12 to 1, and I'll show you what this looks like. So, you know, if uh, Monday morning works, uh, Tuesday morning works, um, Wednesday, not at all, you know, you just check the boxes like this, and uh, as, uh, I, I think the checkbox grid is, is perfect for that. I haven't come across another uh, really good use of of the grids uh, personally, but uh, next you've got date and time. So again, um, if you want somebody to, I'll show you, uh, to be able to set a date or time using a calendar widget. So you can click that and then, uh, you know, say we're looking at January 2022 on the 10th, you know, or you could just type that in, um, say, I don't want to find it on the calendar. I'm just going to type in April 18th, uh, 20, 26. I don't know, just making all of this up, but okay. So that's, uh, that's the date input. And then there's also the time question type pretty much exactly like this, but it lets you plug in a, a time um, just so that's extra clear. Okay, so next let's move on to the question options. So I actually like that I ended up on what time of day works best on a time question type. That's kind of neat. Um, so anyway, let's look at some options. Uh, first, we've got this image icon up here. Uh, if you click that, it lets you upload an image to be displayed alongside the question. Um, sometimes, you know, you could use that just to uh, add sort of a focal point to the forum just for a little visual interest. Uh, um, you could also use it to uh, ask a question about the image. Um, like say, you know, we had our example over there at the beginning uh, with a t-shirt form. You know, you could use the, the image uh, attach option to, um, you know, say have the respondents vote yes or no on a design or something like that. 
Um, so that's the image attached. Um, there's a, a little grid of handles right here. This lets you kind of drag and drop the question. I'll pop another one in here and we can reorder them just by dragging and dropping. Um, that's with the uh, little dots. It only appears if the question's active or if you mouse over it. So say we're down here and you don't see it on the what time of day works best, just move your cursor up. Um, let's see, next there's the, uh, let's delete this one, and there's the, the delete, uh, the trash can option, uh, that can be used to get rid of the question that you'd, you'd like to remove. Uh, there's these two pieces of paper, you can use that to duplicate the question. So say you have several questions that, uh, or, you know, you can use one question as a template for others if you just need to make minor variations to the new one that you duplicate it from. Um, there's the required slider. This one's really useful. Right now, uh, as of or before, this question was not required, so somebody could skip it. Uh, making it required means that they have to answer it in order to submit the form. Um, it shows up as a little red star next to the, the question title, just like email over here. Um, yeah, actually, you see it now on uh, this question. So, And then there's a menu uh, down here in the lower right of the question. That opens some other useful uh, options. We've got... Uh, the description, so you can add a little subtitle to the question uh, if you choose. Uh, you can add, um, based on the question type, there might be different options. So uh, for right now, we're under the time question. You could also add a duration instead of uh, the exact time, and this would let you say, You know, instead of a time of day, you just put in an amount of time. Um, we could also, let's see, if I go back to multiple choice and I open the options, you can shuffle not just the, the question order, but the order of the options. You can also have it uh, go to a particular setting, or sorry, not setting, section, um, after you submit this, uh, this question. So you can actually make uh, kind of a tree of questions. Like say, uh, say you answer yes on a particular question. Um, Say you answer yes, you can have that question uh, lead to uh, a related question. If you answer no, it goes to a different section. Okay, let's see. All right, so next I want to move on to the form toolbar. Um, let's see here. So for each question, um, you also have this little uh, toolbar to the right, kind of floats off to the right of the question. Whenever you select a question, it slides down to that one. Um, so the plus is just going to add a new question. It sets it at the default of a multiple choice. Um, next we've got the, let me move my, we've got the image import, or sorry, uh, import question. So you can actually choose another form that you have created in your, uh, your Google account and pull questions from that form into this one. So that's kind of neat. Um, the large and small T is the add title and description. 
Um, so you can add a just a random title and some text in the middle of the form. Again, you can use the uh, six dots handle and you can drag that uh, wherever you like above a question if you choose. Um, let's see, there's the uh, add image and add video. Um, again, those are if you want to break up the form uh, with something visual. Uh, so it's not just like a long list of questions. Uh, you could do that. Um, I think with videos, you can add them. Yeah, you can add in a YouTube URL to, to just embed it into the form. You can also, uh, or yeah, URL, or you can actually search for a video to embed, which is kind of neat. Um, and then with the image, uh, you can upload it. You can grab it from your Google Drive or Google Photo um, or from the internet or Google image search. So let's see. Um, so those are those are those options. There's also add section. Um, so again, like say you have one section that's, uh, uh, you know, planning, and then, uh, you know, planning for our event, and then another section that's maybe like the content of the event. So the first section would be questions on, you know, what time would work for you, um, would this venue work, etc. And, uh, you know, maybe your follow up section would be. Uh, you know, questions on what are you hoping to get out of this event? Uh, you know, short, short answer or a paragraph answer. Um, you know, what's your experience with this topic? Um, you know, linear scale one to five, uh, least to most. Um, you know, uh, are there any uh, questions or, or documents that you'd like the presenter to have? Uh, maybe make that file upload. Um, so you can use a variety of different questions together and uh, under different sections if you choose. And that just makes the, uh, uh, the form a bit more dynamic. Um, and speaking of that, uh, you can customize the appearance of the theme if you go up to the artist palette icon. Um, so click that and you can choose the color. Uh, by default, it makes it purple, but you know you can uh, sort of play around with that if you choose. There's some uh, default option, excuse me, uh, de default options. Um, you can also uh, make it a little lighter or darker in the background. <clears throat> um, if you click the plus, it lets you choose a custom color if you don't like the, the ones Google has uh, provided. Uh, you can also choose the font from a few different options. Um, and it, it kind of, again, all of this will depend on your, your use for it. But say you're making like uh, like a wedding RSVP, you know, maybe you want the little decorative font there, little touch of uh, something fancy. <clears throat> um, you can also choose a header image. So if you go to choose image, um, there are a lot of different uh, types of events that you could choose from. Uh, Google has a pretty uh, keeping in the wedding theme, I'll just jump into that. So Google usually has like some pretty good options for the type of uh, event that you might be might be having, or um, you know, again, say you're making like an application form. Uh, no, I don't know. You can always browse around these. Uh, 
I find that they're best for holidays and types of events, um, that kind of thing. Um, so let's see. Yeah, if you're ho hosting a dinner, you know, grab this one, hit insert, and it adds it as uh, the header image at the top. And it also recommends uh, colors that it pulls from the theme. Um, so that's kind of neat. And of course, uh, for the header image, you don't have to use one of theirs. You can upload your own. Um, but all those options are available to make the form a little bit more visually interesting. Um, okay, so now once, say we're done with our form and we'd like to send it to our recipients, um, you click send. And there's a few ways that you can share it. Um, it's going to be send via, uh, there's email, link, or embed. Um, so if you, if you use email, then you can just type in a list of the emails. So-and-so at website.com, you know, just add as many emails as you want to this list and it'll uh, send it all out to them. Uh, one cool thing about this, you can also check this include form in email box and it's part of the message of the email. Um, that is really cool and it makes it really easy for your respondents to actually fill out and submit the form. It means they don't have to click to another website. They don't have to have an account unless you want to collect emails. Um, they, they just fill out the form and hit submit and that's it. It's so easy. Um, and then of course you can up, update the subject and you know, if there's a, a message for the body of the email, you can change those here. Um, if you want to share it by link, say not everybody you're sending it to uh, is, you know, has access or you have access to their email. Um, you just click the link. You copy this. You can even shorten the URL so it's something a little not not quite so long and ugly a link. Um, you just copy that and you paste it wherever you need to wherever you need to paste it to uh, to get them access to it and they can go on and fill it out. Uh, then there's the embed option. Embedding is if you were going to paste it into a web page. Uh, not a lot of people use, it, use Google Forms this way, but some do, um, especially in professional contexts. So that's something you can consider. Um, <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, you won't be able to use the file upload uh, option if you're embedding. Um, and then you can also share it to Facebook or Twitter. Not sure what's going to happen here. Yeah, I guess it'll just prompt you to log into that service um, before you're able to, uh, to actually share it with them. So that's how you send it out. It's really that simple. Once you make the form, you just hit send, you know, plug in some emails, copy a link, whatever you need to do. Uh, and then, you know, your, your recipients will have it. They'll be able to fill it out. Uh, so then the last step is uh, to see the responses. So it's this tab up at the top. Um, you have the finished form, you just click responses, and it shows you all the responses that have been filled out already. Um, you can also, from this uh, page here, if, you know, say it's uh, past the expiration of the form, or like the party's already happened or something like that, or the party hasn't happened yet, but you need to stop accepting RSVPs. Um, you can toggle that on so that it will no longer accept responses, new responses for the form. Um, when you get a response, it'll just kind of fill them out uh, here. 
uh, you can click through each of them and, and see what people filled out. Um, you can actually, using the three dots menu here, get an email notification for a new response or select where the response should, uh, should be sent. Um, if it'll be added here or if you want it to uh, get added to a spreadsheet. Um, you can also download responses, print responses, clear out all the responses. You can delete the link that was sent out. Um, yeah, if you click the, the green uh, little plus sign, that's for the uh, Google Sheets option. Um, if you click that, it'll create a spreadsheet or add on to append to an additional or a, a, an existing spreadsheet uh, with all this data. So um, you can have a, uh, a sheet of data that's easy to manipulate, um, has all the, uh, all the options in it. So if, you know, for anything casual, like, <clears throat> like you're planning a small event, um, if it's, you know, if it is something like a wedding or like a, you know, big anniversary party or something, uh, then a spreadsheet might be useful. Um, anything more casual than that, uh, then you might not want to use a spreadsheet. You might not need to, um, but it's there if you ever do. Um, I think it's a great option to have. Okay, so let's see. So that's actually, that's pretty much it. Um, we went through uh, the different kinds of questions, how to create and edit questions, um, you know, how to send out the form and view responses. Really, what's, uh, what can be challenging with Google Forms is just knowing what range of options are available to you. Um, the options themselves are not all super hard to find. It's really just knowing, oh yeah, I can, I can ask for this kind of information on my form. Or yeah, I can use this form uh, to plan, you know, a game night or something like that. I don't have to, uh, you know, use like a, a confusing calendar app or a doodle poll. Like Google Forms are super flexible, um, great for a variety of different uses. Uh, highly recommend uh, using them if you don't already. Um, and I think with that, uh, we do have a little time left. So I, I want to throw it once again to the audience, uh, see if anybody has any questions. Yeah, I know we haven't gotten any questions yet uh, this class, but if, uh, you know, anything's come up. Uh, if you have anything in particular uh, that you'd like to see demonstrated again, or if you have a form idea that uh, maybe I can help you come up with an answer for, uh, yeah, Kathy. Hi, um, I thank you very much. That was really a great presentation. Um, my question is, and it's probably redundant, but there is a way to save that form, right? Once you've created it? Yeah, so, yeah, um, good question. So, uh, like you, you'd like to save the responses or the form itself? Um, I'll just go into to both of these because it's both both of those are possible. Um, so in responses, there's an option to download responses to a CSV. Um, .csv is a spreadsheet format, so you'd be able to view that uh, in Excel um, or you know any any program that can manipulate spreadsheets. Um, so you'd have the responses saved there. Uh, if, for example, you, you like having your data, you know, on your hard drive, uh, having it on the, the cloud in 
Google Apps is a little, uh, you know, a little, I don't know, too, doesn't feel secure to you or, or for any reason like that, then you can absolutely uh, download it. Um, for the form itself, I'm not sure, you might be able to download it. I'm not sure what file type it would download to. Yeah, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing a download option the same way you can with like a Google Doc. Yeah, I, I don't think it's possible to save the form. Um, again, you know, a lot of the Google apps like Google Slides, Google Sheets, uh, Google Docs, those are, are pretty one-to-one, -one, uh, you know, rebrandings of, uh, like, Microsoft Word, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint, and so on. Um, but Google Forms is kind of its own thing, and so they might not have any uh, it might not be accessible to you if you were to save the form. Like, you know, you'd need another program uh, to be able to read it. Yeah, I, I guess what I meant was, let's say I'm working on an invite. Um, sure. And then I'm working on it, and I have to step away for a day, and I want to work on it again. Will that form still be there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, That's good kind question. of what I was, Okay. All right, yeah, so uh, as with, uh, you know, all Google Apps programs, um, all changes are saved as you make them. Oh, okay. So, Thank yeah, you. there's no need to, to save it. Uh, it's all, you know, just when you go back into your, your drive, uh, again, you can go to the grid and just click drive or go to drive.google.com. Gotcha. Um, and then you'll you'll be able to find it in your folder there. Thank you. Yeah, good question. And thanks for clarifying. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Chris, did you have a question as well? I saw you had a, a hand up. Or no, pardon, was that Greg? Yeah, I <clears throat> I was going to clarify Kathy's question. I You, didn't, you oh, okay. answered it. Okay, perfect. Excellent. <laughs> Team effort. How do you give um, the form a title? Sorry, say that again, Annie. How do you give the form a title? Yeah, uh, two places you can do that. One is if you click in the very most upper left, uh, where it says Untitled Form, and uh, let's see, I'll call this Webinar RSVP. The other option is if you double click in the first section uh, down here, um, that's, that's your other option. Um, let's see, there was another question in chat. Um, how can you edit photos or images to scale differently when uploaded in the form? Um, so forms doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, image manipulation built into it. Um, let's see. I don't I'm not sure if I can find. Um, let's do this. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, I don't think we really have the ability to play around with the scaling of the image. So I think you would want to have it, something went wrong, okay. Well, let's try it. Okay, so all the options that you really have are to change the alignment of the image. If we do change, yeah, that just brings you into this so you can upload a different one. Can add a caption. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of all you can do. Um, 
So any image manipulation you'd have to do outside of forms. Um, there's a handful of ways you can do that. If you just need to crop something, uh, that can be done in Microsoft Paint even. Um, so, um, yeah, but generally you want to have your image uh, good to go before you upload it to the form. Um, let's see. Scaling. Okay, so you've had trouble with that before. Yeah. Oh, whoop. What did I just find? Okay, if you click on the image, it looks like it gives you handles. Okay, forget I said that. <laughs> okay, that's uh, a little bit more flexible than I realized. I learned something. Um, and then how can we make further changes? If we go back here, no. Click on it again, I saw oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. the, okay, so, and then we can click the bubble. I'll center align it. There we go. Okay, awesome, we figured it out. Um, yeah, I was, I was hoping that would be in there. I just wasn't seeing it. Um, okay, awesome. So let's see. I think, uh, with that, unless any other questions come in, we'll wrap up. Um, but all of you will be getting the student guide that has all the information that we talked about today and, uh, you know, some uh, screen grabs of, of uh, you know, the different options and what we're talking about. Um, if you have any questions on the presentation or, you know, any other uh, questions come up, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, my email is acook, that's A-C-O-O-K at dglibrary.org. I'm going to pop that in the chat. Oops. Send that to everybody. Okay. Um, otherwise, uh, I know that was uh, sort of a quick presentation, but uh, thank you all for coming. I uh, hope you learned something. I uh, hope you uh, discovered some way that Google, Google Forms can uh, help you out. Anything from party planning to uh, studying to uh, you know, professional applications. All right. Well, everybody have a wonderful afternoon and we'll see you next time.